Say it isn't so. Say it isn't so. I can't believe uh, there are nation states to do these kinds of things. Is a is Uzbek is Uzbekistan using charges of religious extremism to target political opponents? Is Uzbekistan using charges of religious extremism to target political opponents? Did I say Uzbekistan? There are so many countries that are doing this very thing. Or other extremism, sir. Put in that instead. But do let's... Let's give us a little bit of drop here. Back drop here. There's Uzbekistan right here. Uzbekistan finds itself right, uh, right above Tur Turkmenistan and right below Kazakhstan. All of this used to be part of the Soviet Union, by the way, at one point. In addition to other worlds that Uzbekistan operates in, and so you know, let's give you a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a context here. Let's let's give her this title now. You're done. I don't need you anymore. There you go. This is from uh, Drew Binsky. I don't know who Drew Binsky is, but uh, I think he's well known. He's got one point eight. 8 million subs. I am not subbed to him and you know what? I think I will sub to him because this video was interesting enough. Alright, ready? A country you've definitely heard of before but probably know nothing about. Here's what you need to know. It's the heart of Central Asia and the Silk Road. It has recorded history dating back to the 5th century BC with amazing blue tiled architecture and a friendly bunch of people. But above all and my reason for making this video is to tell you that Uzbekistan is the cheapest country I've been to ever. So in Uzbekistan, when you exchange US dollars on the black market, rocks and rolls, you get a lot of cash. Why, you might ask? The market exchange rate at any ATM or exchange desk is $1 equals 4,000 Uzbek songs. But if you exchange dollars on the black market, you get twice the value because high inflation has led to a shortage of foreign currency, which means a high demand for dollars. So essentially, you are twice as rich in a country that's already very cheap. And there you go. So that gives you a little context of what we're going to be talking about here. And we're going to go forward now. This is from VOA, Voice of America, from Asim Kashgarian. Asim Kashgarian. That's interesting. That name familiar to me for Kashgarian. Kashgarian. Let's let's see who you are, my friend. Let's see. Activist experts call on UN to recognize China's Uyghur genocide. Oh, so it's just your articles here. Let's see. Do we know what you look like, Asim? Are you? Oh, no. Asim does not show up. Wait, is this a seam? Let's see. There you are, a seam Kazaria. Nope, a seam does not exist. The face does not exist. All right, so. Observers remain skeptical as Uzbek government says religious extremism rising. By the way, uh, VOA is an American government type thing, although remember, American government is a divided government at the federal level. There are people who are... Uh, in various camps, so I'm not sure which camp this is coming from, but I'm willing to bet this might not be Trump's people. I think that the VOA is not necessarily Trump world. That's my my assessment. Uzbekistan State Security Service says there is a revival of religious extremist activities in the Central Asian country. But the government's history of alleging extremism accusations to target political opposition has led some observers to view the warning with suspicion. I would always view anything with suspicion anytime any government, really any, any power, any, any, any power, any monopolistic power, whenever it uses charges of extremism to target people, I'm highly skeptical about uh, the... Uh, veracity and or the degree of the severity of which I should be concerned about such matters so I would imagine Uzbekistan would be no exception the country's security body in recent months has announced several operations against extremist activities including an operation on September 8th in the capital Tashkent 
Six Uzbek citizens were detained for allegedly distributing material on Telegram, the encrypted messaging app. Maybe not so much encrypted. Well, not encrypted enough, I guess. To This is not a good a advertisement for Telegram, by the way. To call for and encourage going to Syria to join the ranks of an international terrorist organization. I really like that. International terrorist organization. Uzbekistan has a population of nearly 33 million with about 94% identifying as Muslims, according to the country's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Of the remaining population, 3.5% are Russian Orthodox. Just to give that a little uh, perspective, that is roughly a million. Roughly, roughly a million. The remaining roughly 3% include small communities of Catholics, ethnic Korean Christians, other denominations of Christian faith, Buddhists, Baha'is, members of International Society of Christian Consciousness, and... Wow, there's like three atheists left. They're tracking them down, though. Don't worry. I'm not condoning that. I'm just saying that from their perspective. Like some of its neighboring countries, which gained independence from the Soviet Union in the early 1990s, Uzbekistan has been accused of, by rights organizations of restricting basic religious practices. The Uzbek government, however, says freedom of religion is guaranteed through its constitution. And then its measures are merely to separate religion from the state, as well as uproot violent extremism that has been a threat for decades. Body, 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 body. Let's see, who are they banning? They're banning his... his U Tahir or Party of Liberation. They're a pan Islamist movement founded in 1953. Despite its rejection of violence to establish a caliphate, individuals affiliated with the group have been linked to several attacks in different countries. Alrighty then. And almost nothing is known about uh, Jihad e Chalar, meaning jihadists. Uh, and that was, they were banned in 2016. And let's see, what we got now. Many promising reforms continue to exist only on paper. The government still has a lot of work to do in the direction of a new era of a free society, including to create an independent judiciary, blah, blah, blah. The Oave was not able to reach Uzbekistan's interior and foreign ministries for comment. Because they were shooting at it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Miratsoyev. Mir a former prime minister became president following the death of President Islam Karimov and vowed significant reforms, including pardoning, quote-unquote, sincerely repentant, unquote, religious prisoners and abolishing blacklists of individuals suspecting of blah, 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 blah. You know, I am a big advocate of, uh, I don't want to say never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever, but I do want to say almost never, ever, 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 ever. In, in no unconditional terms. <laughs> uh, never really uh, put yourself in a position where you find yourself pinned to the absolute claims of any ideology that demands that you view the vast majority of humans around you in the world or a, 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 a tiny number of humans within you as being subhuman. Something that you can look down upon and you could take coercive action against. Their very beliefs, their very existence makes them an outlaw. And you do not have to apply to them the same civic standards that you do anybody else. Tools are awesome in and of themselves almost always it's always the way the tools are used religion religious belief uh moralistic constructs all of these things can be very useful pragmatically pragmatic to human beings to help them live in the here and now the best possible lives that they 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 might uh be afforded to live within what those religions and beliefs and moral constructs, whatever, uh, allow them to do, but those are the tools. The tools in and of themselves are just there. Human beings are going to use these types of tools all the time to help them try to pragmatically face the true absurdist nature of the universe. Now, well, my understanding of the, my alleged belief the true absurd nature of the universe and I think most of us probably deep down have a hard time shaking that understanding 
In order for us to uh, avoid following that, then we switch our personal discipleships from our own walks, our own ways, our own consensual exchanges with individuals who are like-minded in our particular disciplines or particular pursuits. We shift from that to we seek to have agents that have the power of government guns make sure that our particular understanding of the universe is hoisted into the hearts, minds, souls, bodies, and DNAs of every human being across the land, or some degrees in between. And when you're in that little world, that's when it doesn't really matter what you're saying, what you're offering, what you're promising. You'll never be able to deliver anything that's remotely consensual, and so you're always going to deliver a diminished product to the vast majority of human beings just by the nature of it. The, the, the uh, coercive nature of the exchange that you're continuing to uh, at best perpetuate, if not even add to and make worse, innovate the, the way that uh, a tiny number of individuals can control the vast majority, even though for a number of reasons, especially technologically, they really have no business being on top anymore. They really have no business being in the control of these centralized systems anymore. In part, they're in these centralized systems because we believe these, 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 these ghosts, these terrible ghosts that they keep filling into our heads that say, if you want the ghost out, you got to let us in. And who knows if Uzbekistan is doing that or who knows, maybe they are dealing with people who really are like, uh, subjectively speaking, they really do want to kill everybody. And maybe they're like, no, 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 no. These guys, uh, maybe they're okay. I mean, maybe sometimes when you're on a terror list, maybe you deserve to be on a terror list. But I imagine maybe 80% of the people that find themselves on terror list, on government terror list, probably don't belong there. That's, that would be my supposition. That would be my, be, be my starting supposition. And I would be shocked if it was, uh, if it was less than, or, or if it was more than 20% that actually long to be there that's a at least that's what i suspect so i think on that note i don't know i think we're over with this we're we're over with this we've reported all we can do for this for right now and uh, thank you all for uh, joining me in this uh Frico talks the news thingy and i implore you all to have a great rest of your day because somebody has to <laughs>